Hi, we're live with the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie writers on their journey to publication. My name is Jamie Hirschberger. I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. I am Jennifer Carl Tong, and I write hysterical Christian romance. I'm Christina Katane, and I write multiple genres, including Christian dystopian fiction. I'm Rhonda Hagerman, and I write fiction and nonfiction. Well, welcome to the podcast. We all got into the chat room early, so hopefully you've all seen your writing prompt. We're so proud of ourselves for being so punctual today. Jennifer, you look like you were about to say something. What were you going to say? I just want to say that I write historical Christian. It sounded like I said hysterical Christian, <laughs> uh, which are some at, that at, at times I always suppose. Yeah, that, see, so. I might read that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, but that, that's that's hysterical? the first draft. That's that's yes. the first draft. The are hysterical. we talking hysterical in the medical terminology or hysterical in the ha ha ha? That's so humorous. Sort of a terminology. I was thinking hmm. the crazy version. So oh. that's kind of more fitting. Hey, yeah. if you're new to our podcast, this is pretty much how it always runs. We're always <laughs> kind of. Uh, a little off the wall, but if you are new, we would love for you to join our community, like, and subscribe below. Uh, if you're listening to us on Apple tunes, Apple, Apple, well, iTunes, it's not even called that anymore. Is it? Apple, I don't know. Apple ah, tunes know. sounds Apple great. Tunes. Why is it not called Apple tunes? I feel like an old person doesn't know what they're talking about. I don't, I don't do technology. I want a box of Apple tunes for breakfast. Mm. Mm. So please, please follow us on social media as well, because we're going to talk a little bit about that later, but just want to yeah. throw that in. Oh, good job. I, I appreciate that. Yes. Okay. The We need to turn on the cameras a lot earlier than 10 o'clock sometimes. Okay. So <laughs> welcome to the podcast. We start every episode with a segment we call What's Up? So we want to find out what's going on in your personal life, ladies, because you guys are all so cool. What's up with you, Tina? Well, I don't have a personal life. <laughs> I just uh, work all the time. Thanks for noticing me. <laughs> so, um, we got this whole starting a church thing going on, and um, there's a lot to learn. So yeah. like, that's what I'm spending my free time doing is learning all this stuff about vlogging and social media for churches. And yeah, your husband had a really great idea. Tell us about it because I think that um, our listeners would would encourage your husband to go for it with that idea. Do you mind sharing? No, I don't mind. And um, you know, it wasn't. He came up with this idea, but then I was watching this. I was watching this conference, and they had a guy that's been doing that for years. Doesn't and matter. He had a whole. He had a whole session about it. So sure. Um, but to like, so he works at a grocery store. He's, he's in between, he was in between churches and before he stopped at his last church, he started delivering groceries to supplement his income because I don't know how many people realize this past normal pastors don't make a lot of money. You mean you're not rich like Joel Osteen? No. Oh. We need Maria not, in the chat right now to, to say woo woo right now. <laughs> yeah. Maria. We really do. Um, so he's, so he's, he kind of built up this, I don't want to say following, that makes it sound like they're following him, but um, he's been ministering to this group of people in the grocery store where he shops, and also to his regular customers that he delivers groceries to. And um, so he had this idea that after he's had some kind of encounter where he sees God moving, either in the grocery store or with a customer, that he would, in his car, just get on the go live and just talk about what God's doing um, and like do a little video log of it. So, Hey, Pastor Bob coming at you, bringing you more than groceries today. <laughs> I'm bringing you the gospel. I even put it in a gold bag with an ice pack to keep it fresh. Yeah. I, I don't imagine him ever talking that way, no. but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's awesome. But that was funny. Yeah. So, and we so also got a green screen yesterday. It came in the mail. So, like, if he wants to do his sermons from the Death Star, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. How fun. Well, see, and mm. I love that about Bob. He has a vision and he has imagination. And I know he's going to touch a lot of lives. So, awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Tina. And he has a well, fabulous um, wife that stands behind him. Yes, he does. With all the technology. Behind and the out, scenes. So. Woo, woo. Way mm -hmm. to go. I think Bob should have wrote a love letter to you today mm. as a special little Valentine. Maybe someone should put a bug in his ear. 
A love bug. Okay. Oh, so, oh, um, brother. <laughs> boy, oh boy. I'm going to have this kind of coffee every morning that I buy. He, he <laughs> might be Italian, but he's not the kind of Italian uh, where he gushes romantic stuff. Hey, Robin has a quick question. She says, how is that not a gross violation of privacy, though? You're not, he would never oh. share names or talk about, un, give enough information that would. Right. Right. It would be focused on what God did and not like who the person was. Or, yeah. mm -hmm. That's a really interesting question. And having been a pastor for as long as he has, he, he gets mm -hmm. privacy and stuff like that. He's pretty skilled at talking around in circles and telling you what's happening without telling you. Right, so. right. Okay, so I think it's interesting also. Robin's still watching that hyper puppy. It was a beagle, if I remember correctly. That's Robin's what's up this week. Oh, it's he, it's hyper needy and destructive. <laughs> uh. I had some kids like that. <laughs> <laughs> but at least the dog is only temporary, right? All right. So um, let's see. Rhonda, what's up with you this week? Well, this week I'm down in Florida visiting my mother-in-law. And it's stormy and weather where you are. Yes, today it is. It's been beautiful all week long. It's been a beach day every day. And today is very rainy, but that's okay because we have family stuff to do. So if I skip out right at 11 o'clock, don't be offended. Oh, fun. Yeah, so we might be saying goodbye to Rhonda before we say goodbye to our audience. So if she just disappears. Before accountability. Nobody, yeah. yeah, just don't look yeah, before accountability. Hilarious. Just don't look <laughs> in the bottom. I don't know. For me, she's bottom right in my screen. I look down mm -hmm. here. Hi, Rhonda. How are you doing? Hi. Yeah. Um, okay, great. So um, I'll do my what's up next. That way it's not too much me talkie talkie right in a row. Um, I just wanted to share with everybody, I am not a material possession kind of a person. So I sort of freak out when it comes to home decoration or whatever. And I'm always very happy just to take someone else's and put it up on my wall. So if someone's like, hey, you know, we're moving or whatever, I'll take their whole motif and just put it into my house. Because picking for myself is always such a struggle because I feel very difficult because I'm mercurial with my moods and my temperaments. And if I go chili pepper wallpaper, I'll hate it next week. Suddenly I hate chili peppers, right? So I'm really loath to commit is the problem. But when I see art, I get excited because it's a small way that I can put my personality onto a space and it's not a permanent commitment. So I got so excited about this thing and I, I feel like this is a cheap, tchotchke thing that probably became popular around somewhere in the late 70s because i remember asian decorations seemed to be really in do you guys remember like everybody's mom got like an ebony jewelry box with like yep. an asian motif on it mm -hmm. so i'm sure that there are people of a certain age in our audience to be like that cheap old thing they sold them for a dollar down at the five and dime or whatever but i don't know if you can see so this is embroidery on glass let me turn off some lights. That is and, beautiful. The frame and, is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, okay, so you can see a little better now. Yeah. Now, if you can see these fish, each one is embroidered with embroidery wow. floss. And wow. each of these seaweeds is a piece of embroidery floss. And my favorite up here, there are some bubbles. See the really faint bubbles? Uh -huh. in the, yeah, those are all little stitches of embroidery. And oh, it came like that. this with this little artist artistically i do not have asian anything in my house but i love this so much i just had to have it and i feel like when condo or whoever those people are who are saying only put things in your house that you love they want you to feel the way i feel about this yeah. thing and it's so <laughs> because i'm sure to somebody this is totally a piece of junk do you know what i'm saying because it's so common in whenever they were popular or something but to me it's like a treasure so i love it so I just I love show it. and tell. That's awesome. Show and tell. That's that would have a place in my home too. Thanks. I love it. I love, I love just the idea and it's glass. So it's heavy. So the embroidery is set between two pieces of glass for display. And I just feel like some person poured their time and energy into making yeah. that. And I wonder about that person. Were they like a sweatshop worker were they thinking they were doing beautiful art and then selling it to like an American who, I don't even know. I don't even know. But anyway, what's up with you, Jen? Well, the reason my curtains are open is I want to show you what's up. Ew. Not oh, ew. 
Beautiful. It is a <laughs> gorgeous day. Gorgeous sun, or sun. Not quite sunny, but it's bright because of all the white, right? Um, day out here in Michigan with some snow. We had a snowstorm, kind of, but not enough for our snow day. So my girls were super disappointed. It started last night. Um, and last night was also my baby, my youngest, my nine-year-old. She was in a talent show with her school. And she sang a song with two of her friends, choreographed it themselves. And um, it's from a movie that they like from Disney. And so they all already had costumes from Halloween. And so I curled their hair and we used that colored spray paint to make them look like the character. And they, I'm just so proud of her. Because if anyone who knew, any of my girls actually, but when they were little, so shy and this one is still pretty shy so for her to get up on stage in front of a bunch of strangers is just amazing i'm just so proud of her um, she was a little bit younger every year our church does a children's musical our children's pastor is my friend but she's also just amazing and there's a children's musical That's every true. year and the first two maybe even three years she wouldn't do it like they would encourage her they'd even give her parts one year she just stood up there and cried when it was her turn. Uh, uh, I know, right? And I just was like, you know what? She'll just outgrow it. I saw the other two outgrow it. And now here she is, like doing the children's musical at church. And now she's doing this at school. And it just was, I'm just very proud. So a proud mama moment. So that's my what's up for this week. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. I love that. So Gigi says, uh, we have not had any snow to speak of this year. Our schools are closed due to flooding. Oh. Ooh. Wow, God. Wow. And uh, our author, Barbara Hartzler, says, I don't miss the snow here. Glad it's gone. Secretly, these blockers are behind me so they can't see the beautiful Florida sunshine out my <laughs> right. window. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I am going to Don't you guys have now, a storm there, too? Um, actually we got, yeah, we've been having lousy weather, which is so funny because we had like three cloudy days, like Michigan cloudy, you know, Florida people don't understand Michigan cloudy, but we've had like three Michigan cloudy days in a row. And I'm so glad my husband came home to cheer me up because wow, with the sad, ugh. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, so um, uh, Jen, is that it for your what's up? Is really it. a proud Just mama moment. That's great. Proud mom. And I oh, I should say we're on week three of homeschooling with my oldest, and we love it. Best decision we awesome. ever made. I she gotta say, I saw her rummaging in the cupboards one time when you and I were doing office hours, and I was like, oh, look at the little cutie having her little snack without having to raise her <laughs> hand and ask the teacher. <laughs> it's terrific. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Glad that's going well. Okay, super. So we should get into our topic du jour, which today is clean out your desktop. Um, we have actually a lot to say about this because I don't think it's anything much of us thought about um, before the topic was uh, discussed. And so today it's kind of like a spring cleaning mindset. We're not talking about windows and baseboards. Nope. This morning, we're talking about getting those caches empty, getting the folders organized, and in general, tidying up the inner workings of your machine, cleaning up your desktop. I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but your computer as a writer, um, we are making an assumption that you have a laptop or a PC. It is very important to your writing career, much like a horse would be very vital to a cowboy. You have to make sure it is well taken care of so that it will serve you well. And so why do, well, I just sort of said why, but what are some reasons why we want to clean out our desktop and uh, folders? Well, to make it work and it's optimal. Yes, because that's, why? That was what? bad English. That's all right. Oh, look, it's, it slows down. Like you, you said we had, didn't think about it much, but it's really funny, like two days before we discussed the topic, I had actually done that. Like, wow, well, great. Because we're getting because of getting ready for this church, which is going to be online. I was trying to get my computer running as Absolutely. the best, yeah, so that when he's doing, um, and you know, it's going to take some CPU age. I don't know if that's the correct term. <laughs> it is not negative to have the green screen going and the image behind it. That some mm -hmm. of the stuff they said and some of the reviews I read is it can kind of make things glitchy if you don't have a strong enough. Um, like system that you're using. So I, I had actually already done all that and it was to make sure my computer's running top at the top of its ability. 
That's great. So um, is there another reason aside from performance that it's a good idea to clean out your desktop, ladies? Um, I need to be able to find what I'm working on. Right? <laughs> that is my Amen. biggest concern. Amen. Oh my goodness. That angle mm. is a sticky one. Yeah. I, I mm. kind of toyed with the idea of actually sharing screen and showing my desktop. Oh, you should, if you can figure it out. Oh, because I can. Check it out, ladies. Yeah. Like if you're like me, you get these little whiffs of an idea and then you kind of jot them, but then you're like, well, did I put that in a Google drive or did I put it in Scrivener or did I put it where did he wear oh where? Right. Mm hmm. And Jennifer, um, while she's trying to figure out how to share her screen with us, um, oh, there it is. Oh, look Wait, at hold on. Ooh, no, no, that's that, us. This there looking we go. at into infinity. Oh like, my goodness! Yeah. Right. Okay. So once you guys understand, Whoa. I've already spent time cleaning this up. <laughs> <gasps> so if you guys can't see, if you're just listening <laughs> audio only, there's like eight thousand icons on Jennifer's <laughs> I desktop. Know. Because I always think I'll just save it to the desktop so it's easier to find. Wow! It was the most ridiculous thing ever right well like, i think you have it pretty easy though because can't you just make a bunch of different folders and like drag them and shove them in the folders oh, well i guess good. we didn't even think about talking about how exactly to do this did oh we? i was like, i thought we were what is your to strategy to... yeah let's talk yeah. about that what's your strategy i could show my desktop because that's exactly what i did what did I you do made, made a bunch of different folders and started putting all the stuff i can had on my it? I can try. Maybe. All right. While she's doing that, I just wanted to talk about the psychology of this too. Cause yeah. you know, we're experts in psychology. Um, <laughs> no, but like, why, why do I do that? Because like there is a folder called documents that I can yeah. put it in and all I have to do is double click the documents and mm -hmm. it could be just like my desktop. Like everything could be in there and I could do like what you're saying about folders. I could do that in documents and then it's all neatly put away. And then I could put a pretty inspirational quote or my kids, something, but no, I always slam it up there on the, on the, um, on the screen, on the desktop. And I don't really know why I do that. Well, I think so. It's important just to know about yourself. So as you're going through this process, notice habits that you have and things that you can implement to um, kind of make those habits work for you instead of against you. So for example, Jennifer, knowledge is half the battle, right? right. Because now you might be a little more inclined to save to documents folder, maybe, maybe, or you'll figure out some other fun way to solve this struggle that you're having. And right now is the time to put that system right. in place, right? So that going right. forward, this will be better for you. Well, I do have, I do have a better plan than that, but what is it? Um, what well, is hold on, Tina, were you going to share or are we good? It says I'm sharing. I think you have to approve it because nope. you're the. There's nothing uh, for me to approve. Wah, so. wah. Well, that's all right. <laughs> so, okay. So Robin says, I used to do document management for an engineering company and D&D contract with D&D contracts. I know how to organize folders. If you can't find it in 30 seconds, it's in the wrong spot. Yeah, yeah. totally get it. And I understand folders on desktops because when I was in college and shortly after college, I did along with my career, I had to like also be like the secretary because the company was small and I was the woman. That's a whole nother episode. But anyway, so I learned filing, like the actual physical filing. And that's really all filing is on a, la on a computer as well is the file folders. and like Yeah, that. I um, think that actually understanding that can be helpful for people because I think there's people who never even really considered that they can organize their PC as cleanly as they organize their Pinterest pages, right? Like, yeah, like if you want your uh, if you appreciate files and folders and pin boards, dude, take advantage of the tools that the computer developer has put into your um, operating system. But I would like to suggest don't do documents. Don't use that folder. Okay. Um, unless you are using, um, what is that app called? I have it. Give me a second here. Um, OneDrive. If you're mm. using a PC and you're using OneDrive, then your documents folder should be available wherever you log into OneDrive. Mm. I do have OneDrive. I don't use it. I use Dropbox. I really like Dropbox. It works for us. We use it here in the podcast to share files. I've and used it's it free for a huge amount of storage. For a few, yeah, mm -hmm. I pay because of the uh, the stuff we have for the podcast and because I, I've started to put my, my photos up there. It just gives me peace in mind. The reason why I suggest this is that you do folders in Dropbox, just like you would on your desktop or like you would in documents. And then within those folders, you can do other folders and organize it. So I have folders named podcasts. I have a folder named for each of my novels. 
Um, and then you put things in there. But the thing about Dropbox or even OneDrive, and if you have um, an, an Apple computer, it is, help me ladies, what's it called? Someone uh, in chat can say, they'll know. There's a ooh. iCloud, iCloud. iCloud, mm. yeah. Wherever you log in, you have access to it. So if my computer bites the dust, which ladies, it's happened, you know. <laughs> Yeah. That's the reason why I have the computer I have right now. When, uh, when it bites the dust, I've lost nothing because it's the things on my desktop. So why do I keep putting things on the desktop? Um, I lose nothing because it is all right there on um, Dropbox. So Robin says, doesn't matter where you are saving to, just keep the folders organized. I agree. I absolutely agree. But I, I think that part of it has to be also part of my, my mentality like I need to have um, a better mentality about keeping life organized because as you'll see with our sprint today, there's a reason why we chose the sprint we chose today because I'm not, I'm a good mom. I'm a good wife. I can cook like there's no tomorrow. Keeping the house clean, not so much. That's where I fail. So maybe that's why my computer is the way it is. Doesn't mean well, you I can't, can't be good paint. at everything. Thank you. I'm good at everything <laughs> except my house, right? <laughs> All right. Now, it shows that the, uh, that my desktop is waiting for you to approve it. So I don't know. Oh, Barb is pointing out that she thought we were actually talking about actual mm -hmm. desktops. Well, let's talk what, about that are, for a minute. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. Okay, so we have an outline and we're kind of jumping around a little bit. But I think since Barb brought it up, we should talk about it now. Because when Jennifer did talk about cleaning up the desktop, I immediately looked at my for real life desktop. And I was like, this is a cluttered mess. And Jennifer's talking about how her home is kind of a cluttered mess. And so all of that psychology that fly lady or whoever will yeah. tell you about keeping your home mm -hmm. organized is also very important for your workspace, which translates into your computer. So you may have a cluttered workspace. And I like to say brilliant people are messy. And, and so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but frankly, it does do the, the mind good to clear off your actual desk area wipe it down with some cleaner, rearrange everything, maybe even take a sanitizer wipe to your colored markers and stuff. Because like, look, germs have been gathering on that stuff all over the winter time and you're touching it again and again when you have the flu and stuff. Give everything a good wipe down. And also your physical computer will slow down from all those little cookie crumbs and crap that drizzles down in there. So look up a good tutorial how to use the appropriate tools and also clean up your working space, in my opinion. How do you guys all feel about that? I, I can think better and be more creative if I don't have a mess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Me too. Mm. Uh, Barbara okay. Hersler says, I def need to clean my real writing desk. Um, yeah, me too. Ha All right. Question to you, Barbara, and anyone else that is um, listening. Um, have you guys ever, like, worked yourself out of your writing area? Like, has it ever been so messy that you're just like, I can't do deal with this right now. I had to go somewhere no, else to write. that's about the time that I realized I have to clean it. <laughs> what about you other ladies? I'm kind of a mess, but when it gets oh. too bad, I have to, I have to tidy it. Yeah. How many times yeah. have you met me at Panera? <laughs> <laughs> True. Like leave the whole house. Forget the yeah. writing area. Yeah. <laughs> so have you guys noticed that I've been writing at my kitchen table lately? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> In office hours. Partially, mm -hmm. I'd like to use the excuse it's because we're homeschooling. And so that's where we're working together now. But honestly, um, my desk is such a mess. So I can well, podcast from here, but I just feel it's podcasting is different. This is more chatty, chatty, but like to yeah. really concentrate and be creative. I just feel totally stilted and I, wow. feel like I don't have the time to clean it because I should be writing instead. And wow. it's a bad, bad cycle for me. Yeah, Jen, that is a cycle because I mean, you know, what you really ultimately want is to be productive. So cleaning off your space is, is actually keeping you from what you really want. Like not cle not cleaning off your space. That's really interesting to think about, Jen. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. What do we have going on in the chat? Good night. It's like blowing up here. Well, Robin's office is currently in renovations, so she can't work. There. Oh, well, that's I've, sad and bad. It's sad yeah. and happy at the same time, isn't it? <laughs> Yay, <Right>. renovations. <laughs> sad and bad. That would make me clean, right? Yeah. 
Barbara says, sometimes I have to move to the lap desk. It's, but it's not ideal. Oh, yeah, I agree. I want one of those hospital table things that you can like wheel up to your bed that like, mm -hmm. yeah, I totally want one of those. So I can like dinkity dink dink sometimes yeah. from the bed. Yeah. So I have it because my idea was because my window's here that I, I can use it as a kind of make a U, like an L shaped thing going on here. And then I can pop it up and do a standing desk. That's the whole reason I bought it. And I, I love can that idea. Outside. Oh, can boy. we look at it right now? <laughs> Let me just look at it right now. That is it right now. My my Mac is here. Pile of books that I'm not sure why they're there. Why are they not on a shelf? I don't know. That's a great question. A box with a, a bunch of like pens and stuff. I have need like okay, my notebook. Last year's planner. Well, that's really helpful. Like yeah. So okay. So I, just I have a problem. You have like fake dirty happening. Here's what I have happening. Look. Look at this. So like Hershey's Kisses wrappers right there. Um, a used <laughs> napkin. That's delightful. Um, <laughs> a strange note that I wrote to myself. And then uh, my weird like vitamins or supplements or something are over here. I think they're even my daughter's. I don't know. I just have like garbage surrounding me right now. It's bizarre. Why oh why do I let, I can just, I have a garbage can right here. Like, hello, I'm going to throw this <laughs> stuff away right now. Anyway, we can't, why? We can't be the only ones. I can't turn my camera, but I got um, three empty drinking glasses, two empty water bottles, a can of Parmesan cheese. I don't <laughs> even know. <laughs> ah, we're being real today, people. We are being um, real today. An, an almost empty bottle of Coke Zero. Oh, I love Coke Zero. Like, oh, yeah. Barbara says she's oh, trying. Oh, and the crushed red pepper. You know, you have to have that. <laughs> Barbara says she's tried a breakfast tray desk in bed she just falls asleep oh that's uh, adorable maybe I she love, dreams of writing i love to write in in bed actually i love like to have like time in there and i have a um an art um board like if you do watercolor it's a board that you tape onto and um so anyways i have that and i just put that on my lap and i set my laptop on it so but um i know that doesn't work for everybody mm -hmm. um Bar B says, I have a traveling desktop. It's her computer bag. Uh, I move it from craft room to living room to coffee shop, et cetera. Nice. We need to get her to post some pictures of what she actually means by that because she literally does. Like she's got um, anything she needs from a desk, a stapler, a ruler, um, a hole punch, uh, pens, pencils, everything. Literally, she's got it all travel size. So it does move around with it. I would love to see that. Barb, if you're on social media, I don't know if she is or not, I'd love for you to like, um, take a picture of that and share it and then tag us so that we can share it with everyone else. Yeah, if she not, can maybe even send it to Rhonda. Yeah, if I think not, she's on Facebook. She's my Facebook friend. Um, Gigi says, I start at my desk looking out the window and then I end up <laughs> gathering everything and carrying it out to my cover porch. Aww, oh, that's, that's me wonderful. in the summertime. If you go back to any of our old episodes or if you um, follow if you mm -hmm. are on my Facebook page for my author page, um, I often write outside when it's beautiful here in Michigan. Not so much yeah. today. Yeah. If you were here at the beginning of the episode <laughs> and all the snow. So. I need to get much better about uh, getting outside again because I have a beautiful, um, mm -hmm. no excuse to not be outside, especially as much as I need that vitamin D with my right. yeah. weirdness. That that, yeah. Beautiful oak tree. I would be inspired every day just sitting there. Right. Find a way to sit in. Oh, we need to get you a swing. Ooh. Oh, like an old fashioned wooden swing. Like they can just swing real. Oh, yeah. That's well, cool. I love the idea of an old fashioned wooden swing, but all I can imagine is a bunch of creaking and groaning when I get in and out of it. So oh, I would stop. prefer uh, one of those metal versions, like the, you know, the roller coasters. There's a wooden coaster and then there's the metal coaster. Oh. Like, which do you prefer? I want a smooth glide. Well, we have a, we have a, um, a wooden swing in front of our house. And my son-in-law made it out of, um, it's wider than a two by four. It's it's like a plank about this wide and then two inches thick. Nice. And he drilled holes in there and he got some really strong like towing rope and he put through there. And that thing is not creaking. It's not coming down. Like the tree. The tree might die and fall over, and that's the only way that swing is. You know how home. dumb I am? I wasn't even thinking about hanging the tree from a swing. I was thinking about, like, one of those patio set things because the tree is not oh, on our yeah. property. That's why. I was so confused. Oh, oh, the tree is the neighbor's and, and not the neighbor that I am friendly with, if we want to oh. just leave it like that. 
Barbara Hartzler says, ha ha, I feel better about my post-it note mess after seeing your message. <laughs> That's what we're here for, Barbara. We are here yes. to justify whatever feel you're doing. Feel superior to me. That is my life goal. Everyone can feel superior to me. That is my service to humanity. I will embarrass <laughs> myself for uh, edification. All right. Okay. So all joking aside, though, I do use Dropbox. I if um, I highly suggest it if you have any questions, please tweet me if you've never used it. It's a great thing. Uh, we've talked about doing a, a Scrivener episode. We need to do that. That's just a lot more work than I have time for right now. But a Scrivener episode, and I'll show you how I use Dropbox with that. So I am not completely disorganized. Um, so the things I need every day, my writing, that's pretty organized. If you were to look again at my, my desktop, it's all this random other stuff, mostly for like my kids and whatnot. So, well, if I could share my desktop with you, you would see like five folders. Try it again. Because after you said it, um, you need to prove it, then it showed up, but then you closed it. So let's talk about why we're doing this right now while we're trying to figure out screen sharing. Why is, is there suddenly this focus? I mean, we're looking forward to spring. The groundhog just showed up in America and did not see a shadow or whatever. So oh. supposedly we're going to have an early spring, blah, blah. But spring cleaning is like a tradition in America. Um, so there's one reason. What are some other reasons? Why? Why are we talking about this? Jen, you well, brought to my attention what? Yeah, Tina, if you want to see your desktop, you have to go to your desktop. Right now, we're um, just seeing a never-ending version of your stream yard. <laughs> okay, I I um, shut that. For those I of you who are audio only, we are looking uh, into the I future. minimized it. Is it not showing up there? We have time traveled no. or something okay. with Tina's special effects on her shared screen. All right, so we should probably practice that off offline um, again <laughs> some more time, but because I don't know what's going on, what's wrong? Instead of practicing either. it live in front of everybody. Right. Okay, well, I, I was just saying I have five, I have four or five folders, and one is my writing. So anything that goes that has to do with my writing goes into that folder on my desktop, and then I have folders inside the folder. So yep. for di the different things, and then I have for the church. So then I have everything. Like there's folders inside that. And then I have for homeschooling. And then I have one I just called desktop. And that's like all the random stuff that you would keep on your desktop. I just move it into the desktop folder. So instead of being on my desktop, it's in that folder. And then if I need, you know, like I want to open my Kindle or whatever, I just open the desktop folder and it's right there. Right. So Jen, did you already hint to a uh, national clean out your computer desk day? I don't know if I did or not. So this coming Monday, the 10th of February is national clean out your computer day. I think it's national it might be international. Cause I know we have some international listeners. Um, but even if so, just join us in it. And I yeah. thought, gosh, what a great idea. What, how fun would it be if we were to all just be really honest with each other? If we were just to show our before and afters of our virtual desktops, our physical desktops, desktops, maybe both. Um, let's just be really raw and honest and um, share that on Monday. So I thought, well, let's talk about it at the podcast and see how many uh, listeners we can kind of strum up to join us in this on Monday. But so I'm, I'll, we'll all, I'm willing to do this. Are the three of you willing to do this to be real and show pictures of, of your, of your desktops and, okay, look, and after? Failure for me of participating is one, I forgot. Two, I was not clear what the directions were. I'm just giving you all of my caveats. Like I have every Monday. intention of participating as of today. You know what? Maybe I can go and schedule it yeah, while I'm thinking not, about it. You yeah. know what I mean? It's not till Monday. And if you miss it Monday, do it sometime during the week. So what are the rules? What are we doing? You it's wrote just, it on this outline. Should I just read what you wrote here? Go ahead. Yep. It's just a Join hashtag. Us. I thought we'd be fun, fun for us to do our own kind of slant on it. Join us and clean out your computer day beginning Monday, February 10th, using the hashtag clean out your computer, share before and after pics of your desktop, virtual or physical or both and tag us in your photo. We'd love to see what you accomplish and we'd love to give your post some social media love for sure. For okay. Sure. That's not so hard. So it's just a hashtag. Yeah. I don't Make know, sure I you... No. Make sure you tag us at, it now depends on uh, if you're on Twitter or Instagram. And on Instagram, we're at Christian Indie Writers. On Twitter, we're uh, we're at Chris Indie Writ. Chris because that's Indie yeah. Chris <laughs> Indie Writ. Because we don't have, there's, you can only have so many letters. Um, tag us in it so that we can see it and um, give you some love back on that. Because I think this will be fun for us to, you know, it, it's, it's February and we're all kind of in the middle of winter. 
Um, some of us have nicer winters than others, but I think it'd be kind of a good spring cleaning kind of a thing and kind of a motivation for us to just kind of get on track with, uh, with like getting our writing organized and I don't know. Yeah. And what would be really fun is if you find anything as you're cleaning out your desktop, I don't know, some picture of you in eighth grade or, or something really weird and wacky that you want to share with us, let us know about it in the chat or uh, just tag us in social media because we would love to giggle right alongside you because I know we're going to be unearthing some weird stuff, I'm sure, as we go through this process. Okay, so I think that that's a nice segue also into our writing exercise for today. How do you guys feel about moving on? Does anybody have anything to add about cleaning up your desktop? No, I was just looking for weird pictures because I know there are some on here. I showed, them to, I showed them to you ladies a couple weeks ago. Uh, we know that said, uh, Rhonda has a baggie full of memories somewhere. Yeah. Hanging oh, yeah. House. We're going to have her show that, but she's out of state. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think that's how this kind of started is, is she showed mm-hmm. us her baggie full of flash drives for how she had things organized before and she was reorganizing things differently. So That's right. Yes. Yeah. Good for Rhonda. I will photograph. All right. Uh, Robin says that she is cheating slightly. She's only had this computer a couple months, so it's very tidy at the moment. And I plan to keep it that way, hopefully. Well, that is kind of cheating, but we'll still let you join along. You can, <laughs> so, you can and I already did shot. mine before we had the idea, so yeah, mine's, can, mine's already cleaned up. But my desk itself, I yep. could do before and after that. Robin, you could show us pictures of your construction process. We'd love to see that. Ooh, yeah, I'd love to see what's going to be your new office. That's so exciting. Very uh-huh. soon I'm going to have. I would be so jazzed office. if I was getting like an office built just for me. How fun. I'm getting an office built just for me. It's really <gasps> tiny in our oh. basement, but I'm getting it. I'm Yay! very excited about it. That's awesome. Yeah, I need Do you it. know what I want? I want mesh Wi-Fi. That's my big dream. It's like this new Wi-Fi thing that's supposed to be like killing all your dead zones and boosting all of your what you call I don't know. I'm excited about it. But anyway, that's my wish list item. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we're going to move on to the feeding of the backs. I hope all of you got the prompt and were able to sprint with us this morning before the show or are planning to sprint with us right after the show. Remember, set your timer for just 15 minutes and no write cheating. about no cheating and write about today's prompt, which was Jennifer. Why don't you read today's prompt and share your story with us? I would love to. Today's prompt was write a love note to your Aww. cleaning to your cleaning person. Now I don't have a cleaning person, but if I did, this would be the love note. Nice. I gave her the name Serena because I have a friend named Serena and I just felt like putting her name on there. And I haven't seen her in forever. So if you're watching this, Serena, miss you. Aw, <laughs> sweet. My dearest Serena, all my life, I have longed for someone to complete me. Not in a spiritual sense, mind you. Christ is the author and completer of my faith. But in some ways, you speak to me on a spiritual level that no other human has ever done. (laughs) I've spent a lifetime feeling like half a person, half a woman. I work hard on my marriage and strive to be the best wife my husband could ask for. My children are my world, and although not perfect, being their mother is the greatest joy in my life, and I revel in the daily happiness that is being a mom. In the kitchen, I'm a beast. I know it isn't polite to brag, but I'm kind of a master in the kitchen. I mean, my husband weighs 20 pounds more than he did when we married, so I'll just leave the evidence to speak for itself. I'm an author. I work every day to further my career, whether through writing or business side of writing. I work hard, and above all, I work every day to keep Jesus at the center of my life and bring my children up to do the same. But still, I was incomplete. No matter how much I accomplished, no matter how many things I mastered, it was never enough until you came along, my darling. Your mere presence is enough to lift my spirits to heights I didn't know possible. The sound of your toilet brush swishing, the smell of fabuloso that follows you wherever you go, The sight of countertops cleared and free of debris is enough to set my heart aflutter every single time. I will never grow old of looking you deep in your eyes and saying, sorry, I meant to do the dishes before you got here. (laughs) Or of listening listening to you say, that's okay, I'll take care of them. It's enough to make a grown woman cry. So my dear, dear Serena, I beg you, never leave me. Because with you, I am complete. I am the Instagram mom with dinner on the table and a clean house in the background and a clean, empty sink. You mean so much to me 
I have something very important to ask you. How much would you charge to come twice a week? With all my love and affection, Messy Jen. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> very good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, um, we had, Jamie had a different idea and I'm like, I really want to do this one because I feel like I could really sarcastically express myself in this one. So, yeah, I love it. Um, we, we thought, why not make the prompt thematic? And we really wanted to rise to the challenge of having it ready to go nice and early. So I hope that all of you are going to take advantage of our promptness and, uh, may, and reward us, reward our good behavior by participating this week. Jennifer, that was so fun. And Thank I love you. that you named it after somebody who in real life you wanted to show a little bit of love. It was so great. Right. And if only this missing piece of my mom puzzle was filled. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly you had it. me yeah. at, you know, I do windows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would have been so good. Oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, I have I to say like, that um, my mind latched on to the first idea, so I wrote the wrong prompt. Yeah, let's have you go next. Tina wrote totally the wrong prompt because <laughs> she was confused what the prompt was. So what prompt I, did you write, Tina? Um, a story about cleaning out your desktop. Okay, so let's I think hear that it. Was a, so, oh, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry. I apologize. I can't wait to hear it. Okay. The pounding on the door got more insistent almost as loud as the pounding of Ian's heart. 20 seconds, seven seconds left is what the little bar on the desktop said. Only 27 seconds and everything would be deleted. Ian got up and ran to the end of the hall that led to the front door. Was in the shower, gotta throw some clothes on, he yelled, not answering when a voice called back. This is the FBI. Open the door now, Mr. McPatrick, or we'll have no choice but to knock it down. Back at the desktop, 17 seconds left. How was that? Only 10 seconds. Ian ran his fingers through his hair, trying to think over all the pounding. Is that the door still or just his heart? He looked at the tall windows of his studio flat. Did he have time to crank one open? He didn't think so. Maybe if he chucked the laptop as hard as he could, it would break the glass. Truly, by the time it reached the ground, a hundred stories below, the hard drive would be completely wiped. Ian picked up the laptop, yanking the power cord out of its port and ran around the desk tossing it toward the window with all his strength, just as the sound of splittering wood crashed into his consciousness. The laptop bounced off the window and landed with a thud onto the carpet. <laughs> the screen went black. Ian heard footsteps running behind him and then hands grabbed his arms, forcing him to the ground. A man wearing a black FBI jacket picked the laptop up and frowned before closing it and handing it to another man with a large plastic evidence bag. They slipped it into the bag as Ian was being dragged to his feet, his hands cuffed behind him. The cold steel dug into his wrist bones and his left shoulder ached where he'd been shot only days before. Blood had seeped through the makeshift bandage and a red stain was blooming on his shirt. We've got you, said the man who'd picked up the laptop. Ian said nothing. Going through the steps he'd learned for shutting them all out, they would get nothing from him. He would die first before he betrayed the trust of the man who'd taken him in off the streets when he was just a boy. What? As they, as they dragged Ian out of the flat and down the hallway towards the elevator. Three, two, one. Rhonda's face. Rhonda's <laughs> face is classic. She's like, dun, dun, dun. Like if there's an expression for dun, 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 Rhonda totally made it. It was hilarious. Tina, I know you couldn't watch because you were busy reading. Yeah, but that I was so it. amazing. We're going to have to like put that in the like. Uh, recap for the year. Yeah, what a <laughs> what a cool twist or whatever you want to call it. I just the love story was great. Mm -hmm. So much development and just such yeah. a few words. Yeah. Thanks. Wow, really good. I'm what glad you think? didn't have to do the same prompt we did. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. Is this the start of something interesting or just a toy for today? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Probably just a toy for today. A little chew toy for the brain. Boy, really good. I love that this guy is so loyal. What did he do? Like, what's on the laptop? Like, right. seriously, like, is he the I bad guy no or is he the good idea. guy? <laughs> right? <laughs> so I don't know if he's bad or good, if I should be cheering for him or not. Ooh, love it. Love it. Love it. Love I have it. no wow. clue. Let us know if you think Tina should continue with this story idea in yes. the chat. Because, like, is this intriguing enough to you guys, or are we just like big Tina fans and we're just biased? Like, I'm sure she would want some authentic feedback about that. Okay, so here, um, uh, for frankly, I want more. 
<laughs> right. That's my vote. Please write in this world again. <laughs> All right. What next week's prop's going to be? Yes. Write a story about a person that just got arrested for hiding evidence <laughs> on us. <laughs> 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 I love it. Wow. Fabulous. Yeah, please, Tina. We loved it. All right. I'll go next just because talkie talkie, you know how that goes. All right. Um, much like most most of my life, this started out to be about someone, but ended up being about me. Hmm. Go figure. So anyway, here we go. I love that about you, by the way. Yes. Dear Riley, it's funny how it happens. You have a baby and it's all helpless and sweet. You have to do everything for her. After a few weeks of this, it's just the way things are. You coexist with an essentially helpless person. How pitiful you were, screaming in frustration that you could not make your arm go where you wanted it to go, that you could not get up to follow daddy and I when we put you in your crib at night, that you could just not do everything for yourself. Funny how I did not recognize your frustration for what it was then. It is, like, it is likely I mistook it for gas. So life goes on. You are the capable parent and the baby, your constant, ever needy companion. Then one day, you are wearing that same baby in a forward-facing carrier, and she grabs a steak knife from the dish dry rack, and you think, whoa, this kid can do stuff. At least that's how it happened for me. You showed me that day you had mastered something that had challenged you from the moment of your birth. You showed me a level of persistence I had never recognized in myself. At the same time, you validated my own struggles as I too was once a frustrated infant learning how to maneuver through this great big world. We are born with universal challenges as well as the universal desire to overcome these challenges. Sometimes we learn these things out of order. Some lead fulfilling lives and miraculous lives without conquering any of them. Still, as a general rule, we are born helpless and we struggle to compete. complete. Step one, control your arms. Two, learn to walk. Three, learn to talk. Four, step into your role in our family. And here's where I want to sit for a moment if we could. I know you have done more than your share of the housework over the years. There is, after all, a reason I affectionately call you Cinder Riley, and I wanted to take a moment to say how very much you are appreciated. Now, you and I both know that what you do around here is not to be limited to the role of cleaning lady. Let me state for the record, I never intended to co-parent with one of my children, and I certainly hope this is not what you feel your role in our home is. But I do hope that over your years of contributing to the running of our home and to the development of your siblings, your life has been greatly enriched. I promise, I will promise you that if you continue as you have been, your future relationships with your siblings will bring you much satisfaction and fulfillment. Your siblings are a gift, and I so adore watching you cherish one another. Thank you for making this project of our family so full of wonder and joy. Love you, Mama. Aww. All, all the feels. Oh, you start at one point, Jamie. You started to choke up, and I almost lost it. Like, <laughs> oh, so good. And for those of you that don't wow. know, Jamie's family and her daughters and son, and especially Riley, who she's writing to. Like, wow, that's just that is beautiful, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. She just turned sixteen, so hopefully oh. she will appreciate it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. I wish I could it's be there when she reads it. I mean, oh, no kidding! Beautiful young girl, too, inside and out. Can you record her? Oh, I don't know. She might not like that. I might seek surreptitiously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's one of those for the family file, right? Yeah, I am going to put it in the on the website, so it mm. should stay there for a while. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. Thanks. That I appreciate beautiful. that. I really appreciate that. All righty. Um, I really appreciate all the good feedback. Rhonda, 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 how did you conquer a note to the cleaning lady? You want me to read after that <laughs> this 200 words of wonderful flattery. writing, I'm sure. You I'm say serious. that all the time, and it's I'm always just, wonderful. So just I'm just seriously glad that I got to go first with my yeah. bunch of sarcasm <laughs> that I was throwing around. Like, I'm so glad I went first. Rhonda, you, should you need to just really throw us. And every time you go to share, you should say, I'm so excited about this piece that I wrote. I can't wait for you guys to hear it. Because I, I am. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What have you got okay. for us? 
Um, I was trying to figure out how to add this into my, um, this, what I'm writing right now. And I, I think I might be able to use it. All right. It, okay. Busting through the kitchen door like I did, I know her heart must have leapt. I should have felt bad for scaring her, but I was scared too that she'd ruin my research, or at the least cost me weeks of tough legwork. Dear Florence, I scribble at the top of the sheet. What next? Ugh, I can start better than that. I wadded that sheet up and pushed it aside. On a fresh sheet in my best script, I wrote, my dear Florence. No, that's not, still not right. If I'm gonna apologize for acting like a complete oaf, I should try harder. My dear friend Florence, I began. The handwriting looks beautiful and I like the words. I poised my pen over the next line. What next? How do I apologize for being rude to this sweet old lady who always follows my directions to the T? It's not her fault I look disorganized. She was only doing what made sense to her. Glancing at the clock, I noted it's taken me 12 minutes to get this far. And looking back <laughs> at the paper, I see a dime-sized splatter of ink is now covering her name. The end. <laughs> oh! Not the end, because I will be using this. Please, Good. yes. What did oh. you do to poor Florence? Scared her. Yeah. Her and so you hint it so much. You like foreshadow at this debacle that makes the person embarrassed in front of other people. You talk about Florence reorganized your life in some way to make like, I mean, there's so much packed in there that I just want you to unpack. Oh, please, mm -hmm. please, please do not abandon this. No, <laughs> I feel like with Tina, you both, <laughs> you both need to uh, continue. All right. I agree. So. So apologize, apologies to the, the chat. Like there is a bit of a delay, I think, between the, the real chat, the real time chat and what's showing up that I can share. So it's a little bit delayed because everything's been delayed on this. But uh, Gigi says tears. So good, Jamie. Oh, so thanks. if anybody is, is complimenting Rhonda, sorry, I it's not no, that's fine. Up for me yet. But it deserves but, all the kudos for sure. So do you. That was fantastic. Well, I yeah, that. I appreciate it. My stream is stuck at something like 1039. So we're just, we're just not seeing your guys' comments in real time necessarily. So right. it, we don't mean to be ignoring you all. Um, so thank you guys um, for sharing. It's very vulnerable to share something unedited like that. We get it. So um, that's why we do it, because we appreciate the fact that this is all going to be raw and we want to be encouraging. So Rhonda, I love the dime size flat of oh. ink is now blotting out because you work so hard to make your penmanship <laughs> and then a big blot of ink. Oh, that is my oh, life. Yeah. Why does that not happen to some people who mm. live these charmed lives? I don't know. Gigi oh, says you. so, so good, Rhonda. Yeah. Awesome, you guys. Excuse me, pardon me. Oh, and I, I have, have a yes from Gigi, which I think is please continue your story, Tina. Yes, I think so too. Mm -hmm. I just want to say about Rhonda's writing is she can pack so much rich content into so few words. I know. Oh, it's just Very amazing. Cute. I mean, who is this person that's obsessed with their fancy handwriting? Don't you want to know? Okay, well, since Rhonda has to scoot out of here in just a few minutes, let's move on to our accountability corner. Um, and this is where we go around the virtual square. <laughs> not circle. And we talk to each other about what our goals are as far as our writing career and um, uh, if we made them or not. I'll go first to stop the chatty chatty because it's short. Um, I did not get Tina's edits finished, but I am now in chapter 13. Yay. So that Yay. means I finished chapter 12. My goal was to be finished. I shot for the moon and I landed among the stars. But I should for sure be, I'm going to say one chapter just because it took longer than I thought for next Friday. And also to continue posting to writing shorts. So that's my accountability. What about yours, Rhonda? Ah, dang it. <laughs> um, okay. So my desktop is... Uh, a very comfortable space for me. And if something gets moved, like what obviously Florence did, it just throws me <laughs> completely out of the loop. So um, trying to get into writing my fiction down here is harder. I'm still working toward it, but my nonfiction has been super easy. So okay. I am just really, um, I did end up adding the new research I had done and I'm wrapping it up and I've found a good stopping point and then maybe I'll do a second book on this family at some point, but I'm, I'm accomplishing what I wanted to accomplish. 
Good job, Rhonda. Yay. Thanks. And I'm with you. Like sometimes your your little creature self just can't function if you're not in a good environment. So go mm -hmm. for it. Whatever's flowing, go for it and write that. Good job, girl. Yeah. Thanks. Be in touch with your whatever brain, <laughs> artistic side. All right. What's up with you, uh, Tina? Did you meet your goals? You, what are your new goals? Um, um, first, I want just wanted to say that Robin said she uh, she managed to write every day and she wants to keep writing and not strangle the puppy. Good no. you goals, could, good I just want to suggest that you strangle the puppy in your writing. Oh, oh. oh. clever idea. Puppy strangling story. <laughs> yeah. I don't know Do you, that's very sellable, but, you know, it might be therapeutic. Well, right? It could be like a side sprint. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't know please. what kind of market there is, but it might feel really good to do it. So. <laughs> Pen and paper only, maybe, for that one. Oh, so it's yeah. not an e-record e of you writing a puppy strangling story. I mean, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. What do we got, Tina? What's your accountability and goals? I, I don't honestly remember what my goal was from last week. Um, to outline your story, your, right. your book oh, too. Oh yeah, that's right. And like things just got all upended. Um, so I did not work on that story. I started on chapter one of Angelica doing the edits. Um, so and that's where I'm going to keep. I'm going to stay in the, in that. So awesome. working on the first book, the edit, the the edits instead of writing second. Okay. Right, because I feel like I need to do that before I really know what's going to happen in the second book. Okay. So All that's right. my. So you want to be through chapter one by Friday? Is that a fair goal? Mm, yeah. I think that's about as much as you want to commit to personally. Because yeah, I know what you're trying to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. What's up with you, uh, Jen? What are your goals and accountability? Well, I shared with the, the ladies earlier this week. Um, I have not been taking care of myself, my health. Um, I've shared in the past before about that I um, am a cancer survivor, um, thyroid cancer specifically, which means um, I've had my, my thyroid completely removed because of the cancer. So wow. I'm on medication, um, certain things I'm supposed to do. And since my aunt's passing, I have put on a ton of weight and I was not taking care of myself and I wasn't taking my medicine. Not because I thought, well, I don't need it anymore because I just kept forgetting and not, not putting my, prioritizing my health or myself. And, um, I was getting very, um, I don't, I hate to use the word depressed lightly. Cause I really feel strongly that, um, it is a very serious thing and people deal with that. And, um, and I'm not sure, I, but, um, I finally got back to the doctor and he was, I was waiting. I thought I was gonna get chewed out, but he was very kind to me and I'm back in my medicine and man, do I feel better. Um, I don't feel as down anymore. Um, I just feel like I can actually get up in the morning. And so, um, having said all that, I, I have been struggling to stay on task with anything, including my writing. Um, and so I did not make my goals this week, but I'm feeling better. It ta it'll take me about a month at least to get my T, um, S A T S A T H S my yes. levels, T S H. Mm -hmm. uh, levels where they're supposed to be. And, um, so yeah, so just being completely raw and honest, like I need to take care of myself. And and just being completely raw and honest. I want your only goal for next Friday is to be able to report that you've taken your medication mm -hmm. when you were supposed to every day, because yeah. I care more about you than any silly, you know, book review or launch schedule or any of that. You are far more important to me than any oh. other goal that you might have. Thanks. So like to explain to me, if you forget in the morning and I say, did you take your meds today? Like, can you take them any yeah. time of the day? Yeah, so, and it's just embarrassing that I wasn't taking them because it's not like, all right, so it's not like somebody who has um, a disorder like like bipolarism or anything like that where you convince you yourself that fit. you don't need it. Yeah, right. it wasn't like that. It was just that like, I knew I was running low, which meant I'd have to go to the doctor and like, I just didn't have time. And yeah. everyone, ever, and you guys know me, everybody needs a little piece of me every day. And you day. put everybody first. I put everyone else first. And um, I knew I was going to get chewed out at the doctor because I wasn't doing it. So you didn't want to go. Didn't mm -hmm. want to go. And I just kept thinking, I'll do it tomorrow. Everything was <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. And I got to the point where I realized that I wasn't doing things. Not only was I not doing things like that, but I wasn't doing things that I wanted to do. Like yeah. I wasn't returning calls to people that I like and I want to talk to because it was just overwhelming. I'm like, I'll yeah. get to it in a minute. Like I was kept putting things off and I realized this is not right. This is not me. Um, because 
the thyroid deals so much with your hormones too. I was just yeah. all over the place. And so I'm still not great. Um, even if my levels get good, I've still put on enough weight, like really fast. I put a lot of weight on very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and that is affecting me as well, like as far as feeling good. And, I, and it's is not that because of the medicine too? I, I'd like to say yes, but and it is, but it's also because I was not taking care of myself, not eating what mm -hmm. I was supposed to. And I was yeah. just like, I was just so, I miss her so much. Mm. Like, I know like, a lot of people are like, well, was aunt, but like she was more than an aunt, you know, it's like losing a parent really. I mean, and, and, um, so like, there's just so much of me that just kind of like, I didn't want to face things. So like, it just seemed, she, I didn't realize I was an emotional eater. I don't think I ever was before this. Cause I don't think I faced anything in my life that like this, this is big. This is big for me. Really I lost feeling. other people. It's hard. Yeah. My, my grandmother, I was very close to both my grandparents, but they were older, like my grandmother, especially. And so like I watched her go little by little. So it was different. My aunt was supposed to live for 10, 20 more years, you know? So mm -hmm. anyway, um, can, can I make a suggestion about the medication? Sure. Because I had that problem where I was constantly forgetting to take my medication and I had, I got this app. Rhonda, you have to go. Bye. We love you. Okay. Go ahead. Tim. Okay. Bye. Bye Rhonda. I have it. I downloaded an app on my phone and it's called my therapy and it, it's specifically for that purpose. And it actually has a database of all the medications. Mm -hmm. You put your medication in there and what time you're supposed to take it and it'll send you an, an alarm and it will keep going off until you confirm <laughs> that you took your medication. Like it is so annoying. Like every two minutes she's beeping at you. Like take your medication until you go in and say, confirm I took my medication. And that has made like a huge world of difference for me. Wow. It's like an official nag. That's really funny. It really, and it comes up, it pops up, this box pops up over anything else you're doing on your phone. Like you can't make a phone call. You can't do anything until you acknowledge it. Well, um, yeah, I think that that's a good strategy, Jennifer. And whatever strategy you use, please, please. Um, we really care about you. And I get it. See, I know there's a lot of people who totally cannot relate to what you're saying, but Tina can relate to it and I can relate to it. And especially if you feel going to the doctor is going to be a shaming experience, it can really keep you from getting the help you need. So there is no judgment, only love here. And really just a desire for you to be feeling and functioning well. And for you to feel like you have to somehow hide your grief, or maybe you feel like you're silly for still hurting after all this time. That's ridiculous too. I mean, the Bible says there's a time to mourn and a time to dance. And in our society, we are so focused on, well, shouldn't we be rejoicing that they went home to be with the Lord? You are entitled to your grief and you are entitled for it to take as long as it takes for you to feel better. Do not ever feel like you have to not be sad because someone that you care about is not with you anymore. You have permission to grieve straight out of the Bible. So don't ever feel bad to call me and cry on my shoulder because losing someone is very hard and feelings are tough. People eat their feelings, drink their feelings, uh, substance abuse their feelings away for a reason. It hurts to feel feelings. Mm -hmm. So it should hurt and it's right that it hurts and you shouldn't try to make the hurt go away. Feel it as long as you need to feel it, girl. And I'll be here for you to wipe away your tears. Thank you. I Same, man. If you want to do coffee or something and talk. I really appreciate you, ladies. It's, yeah, I don't know how people do it that don't have friends like you guys, honestly. So Robin says, Jen, I don't have the meds part, but I was struggling with poor sleep and depression, et cetera, in January. I've implemented a much more rigid schedule this month, bedtimes, wake up, exercise, et cetera. She says it's going well so far. If you want to accountability but partner, let me know. Thank Aww, you, Robin. That's very that's sweet. sweet. Um, I think sleep has a lot to do with it too, because ever since I started taking medicine again, I've slept so good this week and what a difference that makes for you, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Barb says started my nanot today. <laughs> Yay, Barb. Have my calendar out, and instead of worrying about work count, I'm marking my beats down on dates in order to be done in the Ooh, month. Good smart. for you. Yeah, very That's smart. smart. Good so idea. Great. All right. Well, I think that um we're about ready to wrap it up today. What do you ladies think? Yeah. Yeah, re remind everybody about the hashtag. About what oh, yeah, the hashtag. Okay, hold on. I got to look at my notes real quick. But this is coming up on Monday. And what this is, it's clean out your computer day on Monday, February 10th. Use the hashtag 
clean out your computer. All one word, no spaces, right? That's how a hashtag works. Mm -hmm. For those of you like me who are Luddites, share before and after pics of your desktop, virtual or physical, with the hashtag clean out your computer. And we will be participating and looking forward to your um, your submissions as well. We're also going to be looking for your 15-minute word sprint on the topic of a love note to your cleaning lady. Oh, and look, Barbara Hartzler says that your story encourages her. Jen. So thank you for being so raw and vulnerable for our audience, because this is the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. And as the year took a turn, we were all sort of talking about how we want to make sure people recognize that that's what you're coming to get when you come to our podcast. We're not going to shy away from the real stuff and how we encourage one another in the faith. So um, we figured that's a, a nice alternative to have blasting through your kitchen while you're doing the dishes, right? Why not? Why not lift him up? So praise God for his uh, iron sharpening iron and all of us being our appropriate parts of the body of Christ, encouraging one another. And that's how we feel you guys are for us. So please continue to come to our chat. You keep us going. We care about you. We think about you in the fragments of seconds that we have to do that. <laughs> Even if we don't reach out much, we do love our, our chat audience. I hope you guys feel that from us. All right. So does that uh, wrap it up, guys? I think so. Good. All right. So till next week, this concludes this episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. Until next week, may your pen be prolific. May your deadlines be met. And may all of your words honor Christ. Bye for now. Bye.